So this is our risograph unit. We've got a step-by-step -step guide just in the top here, which is always worth reading through before you start to use the unit. If you are in doubt and have any questions, feel free to ask Damien or myself. Our first job is to turn the power on. Once the power's turned on, we can turn the unit on just here. And then we're gonna pull down this flat and just open these out. And this will collect our prints. The other side just here, we've got the paper feeding tray, which we're just gonna pull out and lower that down. Now the unit is telling me to add paper. Okay, so I'm gonna add some A3 cartridge paper. Okay, so paper is loaded. I'm just gonna show you inside the unit. Inside here, we have two drums and I've got the blue and the fluorescent pink set up for our two color piece. As I mentioned earlier, we have 10 colors. When you require a color, you need to let myself or Damien know, and then we can change the drums for you. Just gonna press this little button in. When the green light stops flashing and stays on, we can release the drum. Okay, so this is a drum. The ink cartridge lives just inside. And then just here is our sheet of master, which this is the stencil, okay? So it's very thin, but it doesn't allow the ink through where it's not supposed to travel through. Okay, so, We've got a little touch screen here. Our first job is to press this button here. I'm pressing this button. We have this information pop up. Now we've got dual color, drum one, which we know is blue, and drum two, which is fluorescent pink. We're gonna select dual color because we're making a two color piece and we want both colors to print at the same time. However, if you're making a three color piece, and you've already printed the first two layers, okay? You've allowed a little bit of drying time and you're ready to print your third layer, which happens to be fluorescent pink. You would just select the fluorescent pink, okay? I'm gonna go with the dual color. And this little box will pop up. We're gonna master make. So just press master make. Now the screen is telling me to place original for print color one and press the start key. So I'm just going to lift this up. This is my first layer. Okay, make a mental note of which, what is the top. Okay, and I'm going to place it face down. Okay remembering that the top is on the left-hand side. So I'm going to lift this up. Now for your A4 size pieces, there's a little in broken line kind of indicator where you can line up that layer, okay? Obviously make a mental note of where you are lining up your first layer because you're going to want to place your second layer in exactly the same spot. So then we have perfect registration. Okay, so we're gonna lower the lid. And then I've got four little windows here that I can enter. So we're gonna press this one first. Okay, so we've got four selections. We've got line, photo, duo, or pencil. Okay, if we go into line, that will create quite a solid printed layer. Photo is good for photos. Within photo, you can convert your image to a dot process, okay, a dot screen, just to enable yourself to explore a dot screen with an autographic 
layout can be quite interesting. We have duo, which is for duo tone. And then we have pencil, which is really good for pencil marks. Okay, so this is what we're gonna use pencil for this layer. So we just select pencil. When you select pencil, scan in density pops up. Okay, most of the time, you'll need to select the lighter scanning density. You'll only need to use the darker scanning density if you have very, very delicate, lightly toned marks on your layer. So we're gonna select lighter and then press OK. We can go into contrast. We've got one to five. Five is the darkest, one is the lightest. Now, just to go back to your layer making, when you're using pencil or paint, try to avoid making everything extremely black, okay? If you go from mid-tone, it just gives us a little bit of flexibility if we need it with the contrast so we can kind of reduce the tone. If you're sure you want a real kind of heavy layer printed, stick with the black, okay? We're gonna go for three, press okay. We're gonna stick with 100%. Um, if we do go into 100%, we can reduce the size, we can zoom, we can enlarge, okay? So there's lots of possibilities there. And this little section is just telling me that I've loaded A3 paper. So we have these settings, which we'll use to create our stencil, okay? And there are variables in these settings. And we do recommend that you try different settings and make a note of them on your prints. And that will kind of give you a library of information that you can reflect on or look back onto in the future. Once you're happy with your settings, you press the big green button. So what's happening inside the unit now is that the master stroke stencil on drum number one is gonna be stripped off. Our layer will be scanned and then that will be, image will be burnt into a new sheet of the master, which is then wrapped around the drum and the unit will print out a proof of that layer. Now proofs are always slightly lighter than an actual print quality. The proof is it's just getting ready to go. It's just kind of getting the ink to travel through those image areas to start with. Just give it a few seconds. Okay, so this is a proof of our first layer in the blue. Please remember that the proofs are always a lot lighter than an actual print version would be. Now, the screen is telling me to place original for print color two. So I'm gonna lift the flap, take my second layer, remember what's the top, place it face down, and then just line it up exactly where the first layer was lined up. Like so. Close the lid, and then we can go back into making our selections. So I could, if I wish, select photo, then convert this layer to a dot if I wanted, or I could go with line to get a little bit more of a solid quality, which is perhaps what we'll do. So select line, press okay. Contrast, I'm gonna stick it as three. Size, the same. And I know about the A3 paper. I'm happy with my selections. Press the big green button. So what will happen now is master that's currently on drum two will be stripped off. A scan will be made for layer two, burnt onto a new sheet of master, which will be wrapped around drum two. And when the proof comes through, we'll have a print quality of layer one and a proof quality of layer two.
like so. Okay. I'm just going to press one and then the big green button and that will give me a print with both layers printing at a print quality. Okay, so at this stage, I may wish to alter the tone of each layer and I can use these keys here for layer number one. So I move it this way, it will darken the tone of the color. And then for drum two or layer two, again, so perhaps we'll keep go with four for that. Perhaps we'll go four for both. Okay. If the registration is slightly off, we can use these keys for drum one to move the layer. Okay, and you can move the layer up to you know a centimeter or so. Every time you press one of these keys, the layer moves half a millimeter. Okay, and then these keys for drum two. I'm kind of happy with how it's all looking. If you are unsure about this part of the process, feel free to just ask Damien or myself. At this stage, if you're happy with everything, you would then type in the amount of prints that you'd like to print. So it could be 25, okay? It could be 55, it could be 155. I'm just gonna go with three. Pop in three and then press the big green button. And there we go. Our three, two layer, two color. Risograph prints. Now, prior to printing, it's, it's always worth thinking about the paper. Um, with Risograph, we cannot use coated papers, so anything glossy, as the ink will just not adhere to the surface. And um, different types of paper will give you slightly different results, okay? Different colors of white, different weights of paper. By using different types of paper, it will give you very different results. So it's worth experimenting to start with. And it, some of the changes can be quite dramatic in terms of the texture and even the color from five different types of paper, the blue could look very different. So it's worth bearing that in mind. There is a charge for using the rice graph. We have a price list just here and a price list will also be available on canvas. It is a great piece of image making equipment. It's worth coming down and having a play and exploring and experimenting just to see what you can achieve. If you do have any questions, obviously feel free to ask Damien myself and thank you for watching. <laughs>